for me, it's this is again another resource that I can use for my clients to introduce them to someone like yourself and maybe have their accountant on the phone and uh, be able to figure out if this is the best solution. Because I think ultimately that's the way um, uh, to excel in brokerage. It's the way it's going and to be the broker I want to be. How would it work? So with like partners, so are you, you're buying real, who's buying the real estate? So I sold my building. I'm now in the deferred sales trust. Let's say I have two partners and we decide to buy something else. How does, I mean, I'm sure it's complicated, but like, what are the, from a 10,000 foot perspective, how does that look like? Yeah, it's, it's it's pretty simple, right? In fact, we just did a deal in uh in in San Diego. It's a thirteen million dollar exit, and there was actually four partners, and and three of the partners decided to use the deferred sales trust. They had the majority ownership. One of them had like a five percent, so it was kind of too small. So he just paid his tax. Well, the other three were able to do, each each have a trust and each customize their their wealth plan and their investment plan, and 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 defer the tax. Number one, number two, they're developers, right? So they buy land for about five hundred thousand to a million. They develop a car wash. That's their business for about three million. They're all in for four, sold for thirteen. They're not in the business of buying car washes that are worth thirteen. They're in the business of developing the real estate, right? And so they need time on their side, and they need to be able to uh, be entrepreneurial, meaning uh, uh, not only buy when they want to, but buy what they want to, right? And so that's that's their model. The second part of that is you can still go buy that KFC triple net deal with the trust. In fact, you partner with the trust in order to, to do this through a new LLC, which gives you a new depreciation schedule, the way we structure it. And so what actually happens is an installment sale. So you know it is seller carryback, right? Where someone has a, a $20 million uh, industrial property for say free and clear in Brooklyn. They've owned it for 40 years and a new buyer comes in and you say, look, your property's worth 40 million, but if you if you if you sell for 42 million, but you finance it and you sell or carry back, we'll give you 10 million down and you carry the other 32 million dollars, right? Right. Like that's called a seller carry back. We know about that. Now, once you get over those amounts, by the way, there's an interest charge. So we have a we have a solution for that. But that's a traditional seller carry back. The challenge with that traditional seller carry back is that your all of your equity is tied to that new buyer and that old property, which if you're selling it to begin with. The last thing you want to do is have to reclaim it or foreclose on it in a couple of years, you know, to take it back and start all over again, just when you get, you know, done with retirement, ready to retire. So here's the solution. We use that same structure. However, we ask the buyer to come with cash. You can get a loan, come with cash, whatever, but, but we're going to have the seller uh, sell to the trust first in exchange for a promissory note. Um, we'll use 10 million as a simple example, a uh, $10 million deal, fully, fully depreciated, you know, 39 and a half, 30 and a half yeah, years. So he has no basis left. And he, let's say he owns it free and clear instead of paying about 40, 45% in tax there, about 4.5 million. He is going to now sell it to the trust on, a, on an installment sale at 100% seller carry back. And he'll get back the 10 million plus a rate of return of typically seven, eight, nine percent. We'll talk about how we can collateralize the, 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 the investment now in a second. And the trust sells it to the ultimate buyer. So it's like the same simultaneous close typically. The trust bought and sold for the same price. Bobby, so it's no gain on the trust level. Right. The buyer took title the same way he would have. He's gone. He's happy. And the seller's left with a promissory note. He did an installment sale, right? Now, this is where the cool thing happens. He can immediately turn around and form an LLC, partner with the trust, and go buy you know, the KFC. But he gets a new depreciation schedule on that, right? Wow, like, yeah. boom, versus the old one, right? But he can also buy that KFC or that apartment complex in six months, in 12 months, in 18 months. In other words, he doesn't have to do a 45 day 180, okay? Because he's no longer in the 1031 uh, time frame. We call that the yeah. shotgun wedding. He's in an installment sales structure with the JV partnership, the way we structure it. And so, yeah, it is a little more complex. It does take a little bit of, you know, getting used to riding the new bike, if you will, but it's actually taking an old installment sales structure, but combining it with the trust, our role as a trustee, this is what we do here at Capital Gains Tax Solutions. We're kind of like a third-party qualified intermediary, and, and we're kind of like an IRA company. And essentially, we're helped to accommodate and work with the sellers of these, of these assets to execute this with their brokers, right, and with whoever else is going to help them find deals. But yeah, this is why we fell in love with it, because it ultimately solves what they've been telling us. We hate to do a 1031 because we don't want to be forced to pay. We hate having to stay in debt because we have to stay in the debt replacement. We hate the old depreciation schedules. And oh, by the way, we have this estate tax issue that we need to solve for. And right. so what's the solution to us? One of them, and one of the, I think it's the best one, is the deferred sales trust. 
This thing goes back close to 30 years, thousands of closes, been audited up over 25 times by the IRS, no change, no findings, all perfect track record. And enough people just don't know about it. Yeah. No, I mean, what I'm taking away from this, if I, if I go into these situations and especially as a broker, uh, you don't want to be a commodity. You don't want to be transactional. You want to be able to provide resources to your clients, whether that be a, a debt broker, a, a QI, a triple net specialist, or now yourself, a deferred sales trust specialist. Um, for me, it's this is, again, another resource that I can use for my clients to introduce them to someone like yourself and maybe have their accountant on the phone and uh, be able to figure out if this is the best solution. Because I think ultimately that's the way um, uh, to excel in brokerage. It's the way it's going. And to be the broker I want to be, you need to provide options to people. You can't just be transactional and uh, and clearly, uh, you know, providing all the uh, all the options is, is the best way to do it. Yeah, you nailed it, right? So if you want to learn more about that, you go to capitalgainstaxsolution.com. It's capitalgainstaxsolution.com. You can also look at the new book that we released with uh, Kevin Harris from Shark Tank. Pretty cool. It's called Building a Capital Gain. Oh, awesome. Exit nice. plan. Yeah. Hit number one bestseller. And it's my whole story from starting at Marcus and Millichap to doing side hustles at Cheesecake Factory when the 08 crash hit to uh, now making it big in the deferred sales trust, you know, all these years later, since I learned about it in 2009, just go to Amazon and check that out. Building a capital gains tax exit plan. 